All right, guys, I'm back in BABA. Now, this is a requirement that I have to disclose when I'm talking about investment and I exit and enter, I have to disclose it. But if you recall in our past videos, I also was, I sold BABA on, on October 24th as part of a tax loss harvest play. What is a tax loss harvest? Now, guys, I'm gonna go through a lot of things here and it may sound confusing. It was confusing for me too, even the last year or two with, with what I consider myself to be a very knowledgeable person in investing. But tax loss harvesting takes a little bit of time to wrap your head around. It's okay if you're confused. Rewatch the video, do some research out there. If you're in our community, ask people in our community. So I sell a lot of options. And when I sell those options, I get a lot of income to myself, which is great, but they're taxed at very high levels at the ordinary income tax rate. What the IRS allows me to do is write off short-term losses against that income, all right? So as you know, I started buying Bob at 180 and on the way down. So I had a nice loss there. Call it for all intents and purposes, $100,000 loss. It was more than that, but $100,000. Okay, that means if I have a $100,000 gain in something, I can essentially sell this gain, my options, and write it off with Alibaba. But the IRS knows this trick, so they made a rule years ago. Once you sell an investment for a loss, you have to wait 30 days before you can buy it back, or else there's what's called a wash sale. I'm not going to get into that, but they do it specifically so you don't sell a loss, buy it right back, and avoid the taxes, okay? So what does tax loss harvesting do? What it does is it says, hey, if you're going to sell this for a loss, go buy a company that has the same valuation metrics. That way you can sit there and either have the same investment. And if it goes up and you want to just have that one, great. But if you want to buy back into this investment after 30 days, find an investment that for the next 30 days would mimic the stock you sold. So I had Baba and I sold Baba. And for me, my big play on Baba was it was China. So I sat there and said, great, what's another company that my value investing friends like that's in China? Very simple, Baidu. So I sold my BABA, got my loss, completely offset my options income. So now I pay zero taxes on that option income. And I'm repurchasing BABA in 30 days. But in the meantime, I'm going to find something where Baba skyrockets in price. I don't want to buy it back at a higher price. I want to buy it back at a lower price or the same price. And that's what the IRS wants to make sure you do. You take that risk. So I bought Baidu. I sat there and said, okay, in an ideal world, Baidu will go up the exact same amount as Alibaba. In that case, I didn't lose anything. I have another gain on Baidu or it goes down the exact same amount as Alibaba or less. But the point is, in an ideal world, just to make it easy, I'd want to buy an investment that's going to mimic it exactly. Now, it's very hard to do. But I figured because all Chinese companies were beaten up so much and my friends liked Baidu, I was going to ride their coattails. I was just going to clone them for 30 days until I could buy my Baba back. So again, I repeat, this allows me to take my loss today, offset my gain. Because if I don't take this loss, I have to pay taxes on this. But I already have my loss sitting here, so I might as well take my loss, offset the gain, not pay taxes, and still have an investment that has the same parameters of there. So I essentially got a tax-free gain on this $100,000. That's the key to tax loss harvesting. So how did it work out for me? Well, just yesterday, I exited my Baidu. All right, well, Baba in the last month went up 23.05%. So... If I hadn't have bought Baidu and just said, you know what, I'm going to wait and I'm going to run the risk that Baba maybe goes lower or stays the same. But if it goes higher, I'm going to regret it. That's why I bought Baidu. I got really lucky. Baidu went up 25.3%. So I actually made more money on Baidu than I would on Alibaba and I got to buy it back. Now, remember, I had to pay taxes on this gain right here. But that's fine by me because I saved a much bigger loss on those options income along the way. So overall, tax loss harvesting is a great way to be able to add returns to your money. If you do options, it does even better because now you're finding investments that you can offset your short-term options income. And that's why it's very useful for me. Now, how does it not, how does it, what, what world does it not work? Well, if all my stocks go up, okay, well, I'd be upset that I can't tax loss harvest if all my stocks go up. Of course not. 
But let's be realistic. All my stocks are not going to go up. I'm going to have loss along the way. But as you guys know from watching our channel, I have a big meta loss right now that's short term. I don't know what I'm going to use to replace it. So I have not taken advantage of this to offset other gains. And that's the whole difficulty about tax loss harvesting. I'm not doing it here because I didn't have something to replace it. I did it here because I, I felt that Baba, where by Baba went, Baidu would go. And that's essentially what it did. Yes, I got lucky and made a little bit. At one point, the day before, on last Friday, I was, I was trailing Baba. And then yesterday I had a big explosion in the morning and Baidu surpassed Baba for the month. Okay. So again, hear me out here. Because if this is confusing, it confused me. The idea here is this, that you are offsetting a gain with a loss, but replacing that company of a loss with a company that has a similar valuation metric. So if both companies are selling for 50% discount, you're okay selling one and buying the other one. Or if you can find a company that would mimic the return. So for example, if you have, if you believe Intel and Micron are going to move in tandem, and I don't know if they are, I'm just saying it hypothetically, and you have a loss on Intel, you would sell Intel, buy Micron, and either keep Micron forever or wait a month, see what happens, sell your Micron and buy your Intel back. That's the idea behind tax loss harvesting. And it's a very good way, because at the end of the day, yes, you want to make sure that your gross returns or returns before taxes are good, but after tax returns, if you can keep driving that up by using tax loss harvesting, then you can really do a great job in making more money for yourself. Now, if you're in your IRAs or 401ks and you're selling options, you don't have these tax liabilities anyhow, so it doesn't really apply. But if you have a taxable account, this really applies to you. And there are other rules that if you're a smaller investor, you might be like, well, this doesn't apply to me. Yeah, it does. The IRS actually allows you to write off up to $3,000 per year of your losses just against your income already. But when you're dealing with higher numbers, a lot of our viewers have some money saved up, then you're going to surpass that 3000 bucks. This is a great way to do it. But what's the key here? You got to understand value. It did not bother me at all. I'm not, I'm not making a lot of guesswork. Even if Baba had gone up 40% and Baidu had gone up 20%, I still would have net out good money. It wouldn't have been as good, but I still would have gotten a benefit from that tax loss harvest. And that's the key here. That's why you need to subscribe to the channel. And if you're one of the fortunate few, thousands of people who belong to our software, sign up for it now. These are conversations that people have. People in our community are making tons of money off options, off of trading and buying great companies at great prices as stocks go down. They don't get upset when stocks go down. And that's where I want you to be because I used to be the normal person who got upset and would cry in my bed when stocks went down. I didn't cry, but I would lay in my bed wondering, are stocks going to go to go down forever? And now that I've trained myself in a certain way, I can now use that knowledge to help you guys. So go to everythingmoney.com. It is a free, no risk. It's no risk trial for 30 days. You have to pay for 30 days, but if you don't like it, you email help at everything money and you get your money back. No questions asked. So check it out. Everythingmoney.com. One month free. It's only a dollar a day anyhow. So go check it out. Thank you for your time.